And all right, I think get the back. It's uh, five o'clock, so we'll start the meeting. Everybody set up our chairs. Great. Welcome, students. It looks like welcome to the meeting. All right, um, agenda review and disposition. Do you have any changes? I do have a couple of changes. Uh, under discussion item number one, I'd like to strike that just because I'm waiting for a, a quote for that piece, so I won't be ready for that until December. And then under other, I'd like to add an update to the principal search process. And then under non-public, I'd like to add negotiations. Okay. Great, okay, um, and those of board members, are you seeing this pamphlet we've been talking about for quite a while now, creating? Do we have enough copies, or Kyla, do you have more copies? There's copies on the, on the front. Janice, will you pass that down at, um, on the chair? Oh, and on the chair, too. Um, so real quick, we're, we're just working on this brochure, um, you'll see that in the beginning we've got just the board members, um, procedures, chain of command kind of thing on that middle column, school board, duties and responsibilities, guidelines for public comment. Just to remind everybody, we, we approved on a first reading the public comment that's been protocol for about 20 years now, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty comfortable um, pro public comment, you know, their ability to comment and speak, and we can adjust times. Um, gives us wiggle room too. And then our goals are at the last pamphlet, the last panel of the pamphlet. And this was just to help people when they come. They're not particularly um, aware of how the meetings run and how they go, so we thought that this would be a good handout to share with the public so it would give them some guidelines on how things go. We've been working on it for a while now throughout the summer and we've been trying to figure out um, you know what to put on it, what not to put on it. The public comments real short and brief. Um, state your name, what town you're from, and have your time to speak and depending upon we have wiggle room. If it's a full house then we have to look at time. If it's not a full house people have more time. Anybody have any thoughts or Want to share anything on that? Or have any ideas? We could let Kyla know too after. I want you guys to check it out. Please, good. Got a copy. Okay, awesome. All right, great. So, um, privilege of the floor. Does anybody have anything to say? I know you guys are all coming for a class. Welcome again. Thank you for coming. Approval of the minutes for October 3rd. Who would like to? Yes, Peter. Uh, I approve my make a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve, seconded by. Second. Great. Okay, Greg. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Abstaining. Great. Abstaining, okay. Our attendance. Okay, great. Sounds good. Student report? All right, so I'm going to start off with sports. All sports came to an end, but football is still in the playoff season. The record going into playoffs is 8-1, to one, and they won their first playoff game, which is exciting, uh, last week on Saturday. It was 28-8, to eight, and for this Saturday, they'll take on the Sabres of Sauhegan at 1 o'clock. And also for this month, on November 20th, after school, we're going to have a dodgeball tournament in our gym to raise money for the B. Luke Strong Scholarship and the Jameson Jackio Memorial Scholarship. And also for this month, on Tuesday, November 21st, we're going to have a blood uh, drive hosted by the American Red Cross. And just so you know, donors must be 16 years old and have a signed permission slip from the parent or guardian. Moving on to clubs, Quiz Bowl. They had a bunch of tournaments last month on, in the month of October. Khalil Daklia scored the majority of the points but Norman Sackett and Paul Mason also contributed significantly. They also placed third at the New Hampshire State Tournament in Lisbon and won the Ghost Tournament at Hanover. Or Hanover. Student Senate, um, we're not really talking about the bills for our uh, student government um, field trip or event in April, so now we're focusing more on 
what, how we want to improve on the school and stuff like that. <coughs> and we thought of bringing back vending machines. Some pros about vending machines are like for snacks and drinks for the students, but there are a lot of cons. There's board of health issues, wh where the profits are gonna go, and also anything that deals with food is really the cafe services problem, et cetera. <laughs> well, not the problem, it, it, it falls into the lab. Yeah. <laughs> we had a great time. Um, for the National Honor Society, and on last Halloween, we they hosted a trunk or treat, and a couple kids volunteered to give out candy to the kids. Chamber Singers on October 25th, we went to PSU for the New England Choral Festival. A bunch of high schools around New England came to the college to form all together with a set of songs. We also had a feature choral director, Moira, Moira Smiley. She's truly incredible, and it was a fun experience for me because I'm a Chamber Singers. And lastly, for academics, on October 18th, it was a PSAT testing day, and quarter one grades closed on November 2nd. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Okay, principal's report. Thank you. Well, Jasmine did a great job for us. Uh, just a couple of little items. She told you about the grades closed. Uh, so once I get the grades, the verification done, we'll we are mailing uh, the first quarter home. Uh, to uh, make sure we have all the correct addresses and that, so parents will be expecting a letter, I mean their uh, grades for quarter one on semester one, quarter one. Uh, parent open house is the 14th, so they'll get that hard copy, and that's at 5.30 to 7. Uh, it's all on this floor, uh, and hopefully we get a good turnout for that. On the 16th, the Thursday, you know, the high school is hosting a uh, real turkey, real turkey, guys. Uh, a bit of me, uh, for the entire school with all the trimmings. So that's on the 16th for uh, uh, lunches A, B, and C. Um, the play is also um, going on the 17th and 18th. If you would like a ticket to that play, uh, Janet will get them to you probably before the end of the meeting tonight. Uh, but that will be our first play under the uh, theater direction of uh, Audrey Ringline. So we're looking forward to seeing that. And we had a great turnout for the penny sale last Saturday following the football game. It was quite a huge crowd. They took in a lot of money. And congrats to the Rotarians who do that. Uh, they spend a lot of money on our kids for scholarships uh, come the spring. So that's it unless any of the board member have questions for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Committee reports, teaching and learning. May. Yes, um, Bill, you're on. There were two major items that were up for discussion. The first was an update on the ADAPT WILD program. Uh, Sean explained the role that ADAPT plays in student discipline management, and he's looking for authorization to renew and update uh, the memorandum of understanding. Um, and that, I believe, we're going to be taking up tonight. Yes. No. I, oh, no. The, no, we're not. From the ADAPT? That. No, we're not. Doing we're not, okay, we're not taking that up tonight. Uh, the second issue was a uh, sample policy that had been, I uh, believe, provided by the New Hampshire School Board Association uh, with res uh, dealing with restraint and seclusion. Uh, this policy uh, really reflects changes in legislation and it, will, it was uh, moved forward for a second reading. And that was the, all that we had. Um, uh, on our agenda for that evening. Great, thanks, Bill. Peter, uh, <coughs> I took operations. copious notes at our last committee meeting. Unfortunately, they were under my four snow tires in the back of my car. <laughs> so I'm going to talk from memory. I do know we went over I the athletic too, okay, the to athletic <laughs> fields, and we're also going to address that under discussion items. I do believe we had a budget review too, did we? No budget review, but we did talk about the design cost for the athletic proposal, right. which included yep. a couple of different options, um, including lights on both the soccer lacrosse field and the football field. Right. And we also talked about um, the option of turf on the lacrosse yep. and soccer field, which would add field hockey. So right. it was unanimous to the board. Um, to vote on tonight to if we're going to move forward with the design cost for the proposal. Yeah, there's several uh, steps. The first one is the engineering. So that's what we're right. talking about tonight. Okay. Yep. 
And quite frankly, I don't remember the rest of the stuff that we had that night. So, Kyle, if you would. Uh, come no, that's that's that, that, that was about it. it. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Thanks, Peter. Yep. Okay, discussion items. We're going to scratch the first one. Wait for that quote to come in. Athletic fields design, cost approval. So the other piece we did tonight is it, the board members thought it might be helpful well, if Mr. Austin put together just a one-pager of the benefits and why uh, the proposal is coming to you for the complex. And it's really to expand opportunities, not just for varsity sports, but for developmental sports, JV, freshmen, the whole deal. Remember, um, part of the field hockey piece, if you have turf, then you must play uh, field hockey on turf. So that's why field hockey would be moved to the lacrosse soccer and it would be field, field hockey. So uh, I'm going to have Todd just kind of review the summary of the why behind it. We started talking about this in the spring or, or the summer as far as when you had asked. We talked about lights last year after our Luc Bisson game. And, and uh, the board had asked Todd to come up with, and us to come up with the scope of where we foresee the future of the athletic fields. So um, this is the summary as to the why and, and, and kind of the next steps with it. So if you want to take over, Todd. Sure. Um, so on the one page, I don't know if I made enough for everybody over there. Apologize for that. but. Um, so lights on fields, basically any size now, you're gonna look at four um, light posts on a field. Um, looking at about 600 to $800,000. Um, some of the benefits of that. Um, so JV games, sometimes later in the season, they get cut a little short based on darkness. Um, we've lost a few games at the JV and freshman level. Um, Cause the other school districts, they had busing problems. Um, they couldn't leave till after their students got brought home, you know, the school to home route, um, which meant they couldn't get here till like five o'clock. Um, sometimes at that level, we'll do kind of, we'll bring in a couple teams and it, the games go a little longer. So we'd have that option to play a little more. Um, on the football side of things, um, we can host uh, Plymouth Huskies, their playoffs. When they make the playoffs, they have to be played at night. Um, they actually had a game that kicked off on a Wednesday night at 8 p.m. down in Derry, so they had to travel all the way down there. Um, I was there. It ended at 10 o'clock, and we got home at about 11.30. Um, if you play on Friday nights, um, athletes get an extra day of rest. Um, right now our football team is practicing under the floodlights out there, so um, after daylight savings gets moved, it gets dark at 4 o'clock, so it would help with practices. Um, more specific to soccer, our girls soccer team um, <clears throat> throughout the season didn't have enough players to play varsity and JV at the same time, so we went back to back to get the games in. Um, those games, but the majority of them, maybe all of them that we played here got cut short because of uh, darkness. There was a couple, um, <laughs> it was quite dark out there. Um, it also allowed us to play um, multiple games on the same day so when the schedule comes out sometimes we'll have varsity games get scheduled on the same day that we got to move around um, practices um, can go longer obviously in the dark um, when we can turn the lights on turf on the soccer lacrosse field um, there's many benefits to turf but um, just some quick ones um, rainouts will be almost non-existent um, last year we had to move some spring games to Holderness um, School so we could play on their turf. Um, uh, field hockey um, could play on turf. The NCAA level, um, field hockey is required to be played on turf, so it would just help our kids um, prepare for that. Uh, lacrosse teams prefer turf over grass. In the springtime we can move the snow. Um, our spring teams can get out of the gym a little <coughs> earlier, get on a field. Um, we can rotate practices um, later in the evening and play longer. There is a replacement of turf. It's every about seven to ten years based on the compact compaction level. Um, seven to ten is a range depending on how much use it gets. Um, 
The replacement cost is about 600 to 800,000 um, at this current price. Um, you know, seven to 10 years down the road, that number could be different, as we know. Um, so as Kyla spoke about, um, next step in the process would uh, to be to have an engineer come in. Um, they would do a site-specific design based on drainage and um, you know the lights how they're going to secure them in the ground if it's rocky in the ground you know it's, it, there's a different system that's why there's a range of costs that design um, would be used for the bidding process if we move forward uh, companies that um, put in lights and turf would um, use that plan um, as their design that they're bidding on um, for that um, so that cost if approved or whatever would be from this year's operating budget um, to get that design and we'll go from there so the committee voted to move forward unanimously to approve the design cost and part of that discussion was do you do do we get the design cost for the entire proposal and i think that's what we were recommending if you to just have it we move forward with that so that's what we're asking for tonight so I don't know if there's any questions for Todd or Sam. I, I have a question just on procedure, just so everyone's clear. The, a vote yes tonight to do the design to get an engineer to take care of it is just a vote to do that. It's not a vote for any piece or the whole project here, right? Correct. Okay. So you will be getting the design, and then you can look at options of how you want to move forward. You can look at lights. You can look at turf and lights, you can look at one field, you can look at another field, you can look at all of it, I think, depending or, or on... Or none. Or none. Or none. <laughs> or none. <laughs> and, then, and then you'd have to have a discussion about funding. Correct. About how, how that, yeah. that piece would work. I just want to make mm -hmm. clear that that's where we are in the process. Mm -hmm. Yes, Phil? At, at the last meeting, um, I think the, my interpretation of the explanation was Initially, there was going to be a request for $10,000 to do a site plan, and then the next step would be a sixty to $90,000 uh, engineer plan. Which one are we talking about here? We're looking at up to $90,000 to do both. Okay. Um, could I then make a comment? Sure. Please, yes. Um, after the uh, last meeting and after we voted for the uh, $99,000 roof on the outdoor batting cage. I've started talking to people in the community. Um, I would guess I've spoken to about 15 to 20 people about both projects. Um, and the roof on the batting cage is a done deal. Um, so I kind of, I just asked people, what do you think about spending up to $3 million on the fields? Um, now, one per, the only closest I came to anyone speaking in favor of it was only if there was a track on the outside of the turf football field. That was the only thing. Um, I spoke with people, uh, realtors, bankers, retail workers, just residents, blue collar people, and all at times emotionally concerned that we were even moving thinking about moving forward with this so I just oftentimes we don't hear from the community um, and I just said well please know that it may be coming um, but it was resounding that the number of no votes and anti negative comments that I heard so I guess it, it, it really comes down to how it was how the question was asked yeah you know, so I, I can easily say, you know, how do you feel about spending $3 million on X, Y, and Z? Yeah. And just the way I ask it, it's, it's going to, I can elicit whatever response I want. But um, my, my question is about funding. You know, a lot of schools, at least a lot of private schools, I know the, the turf fields and different projects don't come out of the operating budget. They do a lot of fundraising. You know, so as a public entity, public school, are we allowed to fundraise for something like this? Is this something that we could, you know, put on the long-term plan, like start actually fundraising? There are a lot of people from Plymouth that have done well, and I think 
would would be interested in, in donating. You know, and, uh, it, that's just a thought. That's just a thought because I get it. The taxpayers in Plymouth, you know, we're we're all very concerned about that, about mm -hmm. you know rising raising taxes, and even in the surrounding communities, I completely get it. So, I think it would, it probably would, I guess, sit a little better with them if they knew that we were doing some sort of fundraising to try and achieve that. Try to offset it. Yeah, so we're we're a little far away from that piece, but absolutely you can. Years ago, when the track was brought up to yeah. come up with that piece, the board said, "Go ahead and fundraise and see what you get." They only, I think, raised about twenty twenty two thousand dollars, so that was not here. enough. Yeah, to you do anything, so it was given back. Um, I think once you get the design and see what the actual cost is going to be for whatever you want mm -hmm. as far as the scope of the project. Um, it's, it's a two-part question, right? It's, it's philosophical in this town, as yeah. you know. I'll just address the elephant in the room as far as that piece. I think you have to look at both fields and, and kind of see what the priorities are. Um, we'd love all of it, but absolutely it's a huge project. But, but moving forward, just with the design costs, you can actually see what the cost is instead of just wondering. I mean, we're asked all the time about why don't why don't we have lights? Why don't we have turf? I mean, I get that that question all the time. Um, so I think it, it it just to go through the process would be helpful. But you, to, the answer to your question is yes, you can fundraise. But I guess how how effective is it? I think it depends on what it's for, yeah. you know, and, yeah, 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 and, sure. and, and yeah. the grassroots behind it. Typically, a lot of things get passed when there is a group of community members, obviously, that help out with that. You have our most, some of our most successful programs at the little kid level yeah. is the parents that are involved. Yeah. And if you have a strong group of parents involved, with whatever the sport may be, those programs are successful because of them. So. And just to piggyback off of Kyle, if, uh, if I recall, because I think I'm the only one that's been here that long, uh, they did they did do the design for the track. That committee did uh, they approved and they came forward, but the money never fell through. But uh, on the other end, when we redesigned, when we did the uh, ski jumping, that was almost totally done. Is that right? And and the, the town right. came out and in and, and force and just you know. I, I couldn't believe fundraising yeah. it was well over into hundred thousand dollars if I recall and uh, still gave me a ton of money for equipment and electric and all that piece. so depends like she said on the yeah okay so Paul and then Barbara uh, sorry, Did you you're, right? Right? you're good okay he Thank okay all right sure great thanks Barb so I just wanted to further on that comment about the ski jump we we as a board had pretty much thought that it was going to be in our past. And that was probably as late as August. Yes. And the community really came behind and got that up. It was amazing. So there was a lot of community support for that when we thought it was a done deal and in our past. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone so else? Yeah, it's great. Only state in the nation. OK, so the question is, um, Moving forward, do people want to, we have the money to do the project. The design cost. The design for the project. One, one more clarification. Yes. How, how long are the plans due for? It, do we have a, a lifespan of, well, you have 10 years, but you have to build it with this plan, or are they going to say five years, we need to come out and do it again? Did they so, so the plan itself would be, uh, you know, a few years. Um, the money that it would cost over the years may change. You right? Right, right. You right. know, so the plan itself would be the plan. So, <coughs> so the plan would be good. Would be viable for for years. Yeah. For years. Yeah. Few years. Yeah. Because yeah. Okay. Just the cost that changes. Go. <laughs> Go. Okay, Peter. It's a lot of money. It's coming out of our budget this year, but we'll have definitive costs. We won't be speculating. It's going to be somewhere between 2.1 and 2.6. It's going to be 2.25 or whatever it is. And we can act more intelligently if we have concrete numbers than we're going to vote on speculation. Thank you. Yep. All right. And it's a multi-year um, project. It's not something that's going to be, if you vote on it, it's, we can't get that done this summer. 
So it's something long range, but, but we thought we have to have a conversation moving forward. Okay. <coughs> Bob, you're referring to if we move forward with the full project. Right. That's what's going right. to take we're a long time. Right. We're not asking for anything right. in this But budget, this but part, the 90,000, will be right now. Right, right now. Okay. Okay. One more question. Yes, Greg. Uh, I'm just curious. I, I, don't, I don't know about this, but have there been any studies looking at recruitment, you know, getting this kind of infrastructure at the school, the fields, the, the lights, would it improve our recruitment of kids? Would kids, more kids want a tuition in? You know, would, would it create more of a, 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 this is more of a destination for some folks, more than it already does? Well, we're not allowed to recruit kids. Yeah. Um, well, would more kids want to come? More kids that are looking for schools to go to may be attracted to our yeah. area. Yeah. Um, you know, the youth, the youth kids that are starting into sports, you know, seeing a turf field, it's, it's bright, it's shiny, it's new, you know, it looks cool. Um, recruiting those kids that are already in our area, I think would be, would we benefit from that yeah. more. Have, have you ever talked to other football programs that have a lot of night games, a lot of, you know, night activities? Do they see more in terms of booster fundraising? So I, I've talked to um, Hollis Brookline, just installed a, a new turf field. Um, their their revenue at the gate is is up across the board. Um, Goffstown has just put in a new field. I haven't talked to him about um, this. This fall is the first season that he's had a full season on the turf. Um, but generally, um, the night games draw a little bigger crowd. Um, as far as that is, you know, um, people are out of work. They can get here. You know, um, things like that. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Paul. Have you talked to anybody that's had the field for five or six years? Um, so the one person <laughs> I've talked to that's had a long-standing field, actually there's two. One is uh, Sauhegan. Um, they've had their field, I want to say it's been about 12 years now. Um, you know, they, they have the one field, it's the football field. Um, the scheduling is tougher when it's just one field that um, – is the football field um, just because when it's on a football field, the football team takes precedence over the other no, the other teams. How it stood up. Oh, it stood up. They've replaced theirs one time, um, and Hanover's the other one. Um, they just replaced their turf two years ago, have you um, and they to, had it for nine, you to Jason nine years. Talked to Jason about uh, Hanover. <coughs> yeah, yeah. He, I got most of the information from him about the Hanover field. So they replaced. I want to say it was two years ago they replaced it. They test it every year. They come in and do a compact test on the turf. And once it hits a certain point, you got to replace it. How does snow removal affect it? Snow removal, um, you got to do it right. You know, you could, um, if you're moving snow with, say, like a heavy snow plow or something, you could get down too low and dig into the turf. Um, typically, they put a, it's plasticky, hard rubber. Um, below the, the blade so you don't hurt the turf, dig into it. Um, but, you know, uh, Jason Bergeron, again, they, they used a <coughs> snow blower in Hanover. It's lighter, doesn't compact the ground as much. All right. So this probably will be a question for later, but having brought up equipment and plowing, is that going to mean that we would require different equipment than what we now have? So when you build a turf field, the, the equipment needed for the infill, so there's a rubber infill, there's a sand-based infill that goes on the field, that machine comes with within the cost. Um, as far as removing snow, our grounds crew has what we need right now to move snow if we need it. Phil? With respect to lights, what would it cost to run the lights? the four or five times a year that we would probably be using it for games. I think we'd be using it more than that. Well, yeah, it would be practices, yeah. I think they're saying, and games. The new lights are LED, Phil. I don't I don't have a exact cost per game, per hour, whatever. Um, but um, the new lights, it is a, it's very much less than the old lights. So, you know, you go to some old fields, they have the old halogen lights. They cost more to run. 
the new LED lights don't cost as much. I don't have an exact number though. Do you know if anyone? Yes, sure. Do you know if anyone's somehow trying to use solar to provide that? I don't know. I know Holderness has a big solar field. Right. I don't know if they're running their lights and stuff off right. that or not, but I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. Do people need more time? Does anyone want to make a motion? Where are people at, Paul? Yeah, I'll make a motion move forward with the design fees. Okay, a motion to move forward with a specific design project. Seconded by. Do we, uh, can I? Yes. Do we want to set a figure on that? Isn't it uh, to spend up I, to? Up I to would ask that you you're specific to say up to ninety thousand. Oh, so all right. To so authorize the expense of up to ninety thousand dollars for a site plan slash engineering analysis of this proposal. Yes. Thanks, Sam. Your motion. Thank I just you. Uh, <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> said. Okay, great. Seconded by Greg. All those in favor? Opposing? Abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Budget review first draft. Okay, don't take all my details. <laughs> <laughs> I need some of them. Janet, can you pass the budgets out, please? Yeah. And then any leftovers, obviously. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And then you can give us some sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. everybody have the handouts? Yes? Yes. So just as far as process, oh wait a minute. <laughs> just as far as process, typically in November I give you the first draft. I will not go through the entire document, but I do want to uh, highlight for you some of the significant increases and decreases to give you a chance to kind of look, a bit, look at it over the month, come back next month with any uh, suggestions. So in this budget is what is um, needed given all the replacements that we need as well, um, which is sometimes the percentage is a little bit higher, which it is, and then we can do our work from there through um, work at the board level. So I gave you a pink handout, which I'm just gonna go through a quick explanation of the, the big categories as far as what's significant and what's not. Um, the first category on the pink sheet is the special education. So you will <coughs> see in that whole category, and that includes everything from that, everything in the special ed piece, including autism services, independent evaluations, equipment maintenance, and out of district students, you'll see is up significantly at 463,000. 546. So that is a, a bulk of the increase right there. And that is usually based on, remember, special ed sometimes is a catch-all for homeless student charges, uh, could be for charter school charges, it's for special education, it's for foster care, it's for anything court appointed and students that are placed out of district, the school has an associated cost with that. So that's all lumped under the out of district placement. You'll see that number, which is really so high sometimes. Law has changed over the past few years where we have gained more responsibility for any students that, that's put in foster care or placed out of district <clears throat> or even going to a charter school. We're responsible. If they're, mo if they're coming from one of the Pemi Baker towns, we're responsible for the um, cost of special education. If that makes sense. The next one is 1,400 co-curricular athletics. <clears throat> Overall, that's up 14,559. And I just always like to, 
tell you where the cycles are for uniforms. So this year, the, the, they'll be replacing cheerleading, boys and girls cross country, boys and girls track, helmet reconditioning for football, golf bags, and then netting for volleyball. Um, and that, that's just a general idea, and that's within a cycle that's already, um, that Todd follows. The 2120 account, which is guidance, there is, it is up 20,905. That is purely on the collective bargaining agreement or any track changes within there. So that's just the, your current staffing increases. The 2160 account, which is speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. So again, related to any special ed services, there is an increase in those related services and therapies. So that's why you're seeing that up. The 2320 account is SAU services, so that's up 20195 That's your PEMI Baker apportionment. We have the same staffing. Really, the increase from the SAU office is the health insurance, which is a different story, which it's going to, you're going to see an increase that is quite significant um, SAU-wide. The 2600 account is custodial services. It's up 196681 so what Mr. Parsons and I did was put your current capital projects in there as well. That's some, sometimes this could be a line that you could be flexible with as far as what, what is priority and not. Uh, but we put it all in in the initial round and then we can look at it second round too. Obviously there's been a significant increase in costs with contracted services, maintenance and supplies. So this custodial services not only covers what's happening here in the building, but the buildings and grounds, the park and rec department, as far as their costs as well. So that's all included in this piece. We do anticipate an increase in water and sewage of about 8,776. Part of your capital improvement pro um, plan is the burn room drain that needs to be replaced that's come up. So that's about 38,500. Your part of your technology improvement plan is the server room upgrade which is 9720. Another project that has, that's in your plan are Wi-Fi and cameras to all of the um, athletic fields, and that is really for streaming and huddle. I don't know if any of you are, uh, so some of our teams use kind of a, the best way to describe huddle is a playback or, or film video. Yeah, to, it's a to way replay. to review film for, for teams. They can, they can uh, edit and cut and put notes on Phil. What, what, what else do you need Wi-Fi for? Just the... Uh, Wi-Fi for uh, streaming, uh, the, the cameras, um, yeah. things like that. Okay. <coughs> uh, replacing the scissor lift, that's from the maintenance equipment, and then replacing um, the tractor for Parks and Rec out here as far as the grounds. Yes. Um, so that's... The John Deere. Yeah. The 2700 account, which is, which is transportation services, you're in the last year of your busing contract. Um, but really the increase, again, is coming through specialized transportation. So that's any special ed students that have to be transported to other places. So that's where the increase is coming from. And then again, that includes homeless transportation. So any student who is homeless within the SAU or coming back, coming into the SAU, that cost is split with the sending district. So that's how the homeless laws um, come about. Health insurance, health insurance is up significantly this year. I gave you a 20 year history of medical rates. Uh, we are in a pool, you will see, with members of the local group. So that's all of our SAU 48 schools, the town of Plymouth, Plymouth Village Water and Sewer, the town of Rumney, town of Thornton, in town of Waterville Valley. And um, you'll see the health trust average at the top for this coming up year is 16.5%. Our local group is at 13.9%. So that's what I'm talking about as far as a significant increase in health insurance. On the next page are your decreases. So you'll see regular education, which is your 1100 account. That's the majority of your budget. So that is, that, that decrease is showing your savings from your folks that are retiring. Um, so it's the same amount of staff and then putting in lower salaries for, for those folks that are, that are leaving. 
for the Applied Technology Program, that's supposed to say Applied, um, we do have a retirement there too, so that's the savings with that piece, but same amount of staffing. We have the principal's office savings. We have a new principal <laughs> coming in. So that's Thank you very much. Savings. <laughs> and then the principal and interest, that's just your payment for next year. It's down 14000 Your two debts right now is the cost of your energy performance plan from a few years ago, as well as the Career Tech Center, which is here at the renovation here. Um, overall budget, draft one is up 883,346, which is 5% just on appropriations, not accounting for revenues. So we can go back in um, with the direction of the board, kind of take a look at it over the next month. Um, and then we can certainly do any work for you on our end if you want to get it down to a certain percentage as well. Didn't we have a goal of 3%? Yeah. It is 3%, yeah. But I think as part of that discussion from uh, retreat that we looked at, you know, that is the goal, but let's put what's in there and then right. see. Right. I think yep. that's definitely the goal for you. Yeah. yeah. And we can certainly recommend that Kyla goes through the drawing board and see with Bruce and, and Janet how where we can where we can tailor it back, see what you can do, and second reading next yeah, month. Yeah, we can bring definitely kind of if you, you know, how, however much you want to go, and then what cuts into programs, like as we get lower and lower. So it's just something we can bring a few options for you. Yep, be yeah, creative. Okay, Phil. Uh, I, I'd rather see the administration come in with a list rather than us try to cut the budget. Yeah. Um, to get more in line with the three, I, I think it's micromanaging if we try to tell you where to, and I don't think that's appropriate, but if you could try to get closer to that 3%, that's one person. Sure. We can, yeah. but, but just to be clear, we don't have, because we, you know, we always face this, we have no control special school or administration over the special education, which is, my rough calculation is well over 50% of these increases, correct? And that includes the transportation and the health insurance is just a bad year. And we don't have control over the health insurance either. At 600,000 total. Right. <coughs> so, so three quarters of what's on here, we don't have control over. And by we, I mean the board and the administration. Is that, is that an accurate statement? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So, so we'll come options. up with yep, some options, options that for get you down to certain levels, and then you can absolutely choose what you want to keep and what you want to move forward with, okay? Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, November committee meetings. So no, the November committee meetings, last year when we had committee, we, I don't think we were able to have a quorum because it was a week of Thanksgiving. So I, it's, again, the week of Thanksgiving. So I remember the board had asked that we maybe cancel that meeting and just have our full board meeting for December 4th. Wait, what's the Tuesday? 21st? No, no, no. December 5th. 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 Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. People have expressed that's what they'd like to do, um, and we're comfortable to be able to return to school for a week and then have our meeting unless... Yeah, I mean, the majority of the meetings, I mean, it's, gonna, it's budget season, so that's what we're doing. Okay. I try not to add too many other things to the table right. with, with okay. that going on because it does take some work. Okay, sounds good. So we'll cancel that week, give you more time to work on the budget. Yep. In the meantime, we do post the drafts online, and then we'll just update them as uh, we work through them. Okay, sounds okay. great. Uh, update on principal's report. So I would like to ask the board to extend um, the posting for an additional month. I think the posting was a little bit early um, to gather enough candidates within the pool, so I would like to extend it to December 1st. Uh, that's a recommendation from your committee. Those of you that sit on the committee, feel free to speak up, but I think that's the majority of the reason. Okay. Any okay. questions or no? Okay. It is a change th than what we have posted, so I just want to update that, and I would like the board to vote on that. If you're okay. With that. 
Who wants to do you want a motion? Yeah. Uh, yes. I would move that we authorize the extension of the principal search uh, committee for one month. Is that what you're? Well, till December December first. Okay. Yeah. So we're just going to get it out for an additional several weeks. Second. Thank you. Seconded by Peter. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. Abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Other business? I uh, no other business. Okay. Privilege of the floor. So going back to our policy, if anyone would like to speak, we just need your name and what community you're from and or what town and anything you'd like to share with us. Hi, Sarah Terrell, Plymouth. Uh, I agree with Phil in that uh, my interest in any sort of athletic field updates would include a track. That's something that's been talked about so many times. Um, and so I would love for the board to at least sort of feel out the community. Are we willing to do some more fundraising? Maybe we have more parents that are willing to get on board with that. Uh, I don't think it's planned in this current design, which is fine. But I, I just don't want us to forget about it because it is definitely something that the community has asked for on several occasions. Thank you. Thank you. Am I, am I allowed to? Yes. Could we add that? Would that, would that be much of a cost? Because if that, if that, you know, I agree, if that increases the community's interest in, in, in going forward with a project like this, you know, why, why not? Why, why not add that, at least to yeah, the so engineering the, plan? There was a group, right? Yes, I have Bruce, a design. Bruce would know more yep. about the, the how and it went. I wasn't involved did then. Didn't you say something about it, it wasn't, we, we couldn't have enough lanes? It was, yeah, we couldn't have an eight-lane eight drag lane. out here. So I Six. Was just, I was just out, out at South Hegan and I counted their lanes and there were six. Yeah. yeah. We just wouldn't be able to host it. Uh, and I, he knows more. A state, we we wouldn't state, be able to host uh, a state meet. Oh, okay. But you'd have a, a workable track out there, six lanes would be ideal. <coughs> yeah. with, with the, you know, yeah. all the construction we have out there, the tower and all that yeah. piece. That's what the design was made. I have the actual drawings in that piece. Yeah. yeah. Could we still have meets? Could, could we yeah. still do meets? Yeah. Just not a state championship right. or something. It was a beautiful design. Yeah. Yeah, if we could add that, that'd be, that'd be great. I don't know how oh, much. Well, it's already done, done, though, is what you're saying. The, well, we that, that was years ago. No, no, I, I, was, I was on the board, I remember. Yeah. That. Yeah, we, we considered it at the time. And, um, and they have, came and did a, they did a proposal they did. for it. Right? We would have the dynamite back into the hill. Yep. Which was a consideration. It is one corner, right? Correct. And so, th th at least as I recall, the thought process after it was, Maybe off campus sites needed to be. Yeah, you're talking uh, about playground. Yes. Is, is what it was. Also, um, we'd expressed some interest in, in um, partnershiping with the college on, on something like that because the college doesn't have an off road track, too. Mm -hmm. But that, that's where that stood. Is that it as far as the how the conversation ended? Just well, the my track mind. wouldn't fit. Wouldn't over, fit over yeah. there. Wouldn't fit on the soccer right. lacrosse field. It wouldn't fit up on the parking mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. And if you had it, you would have to you would have to dynamite into the hill, and there was an unknown cost of what that would take, and plus there'd be all the considerations of doing that, and you could only fit in six lanes, which mm -hmm. couldn't allow you to have state meets, which was the consideration. So my recollection was that. Um, we passed on it and um, for another day, but we'd have to consider off-site locations, like up off um, um, Tenney Mountain someplace or down at the college someplace or, or future discussions with the college. That's my recollection, but this was years ago. And they only raised 22,000 out of the friends of the track. Correct. So it, I ended up after giving that money back to, you know, the people who donated. I said something real quick. Yeah, sorry. Yes, so continuing yeah, so on with the I live right here in Plymouth. I'm also the president of the Plymouth Huskies. And so I obviously missed my opportunity to talk to everybody about voting on the, the design and food. So thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. So I um so I think Friday night football has been an event for the past two years. And I I would give different feedback than the gentleman. I think everybody that I've spoken to, the feedback has been awesome about having a Friday night football game here in Plymouth. And I think it's, it's a little bit overdue in that regard, just being a townsperson, I have young children that are growing up. It is an event, it's, it's, the, it's the busiest football game that I've been to in a long time every Friday night. So 
I don't think anybody would have any problem spending that kind of money to invest in the, the athletic fields here. And the other thing too is that I also coach lacrosse. There's over 120 boys and girls that play lacrosse here in Plymouth. And we have to go to the college, we have to pay money to play at the college, we have to go pay money to play at Holderness because they have a turf field. So I think that would also help our lacrosse kids as well, um, having a turf field, you know, having accessibility here. So I think the lights do a lot for the community. I'm not looking at it as dollars and cents, I am looking at it building a community and I think more people, you know, folks in my age group will be able to come for a Friday night football game. So having that and also having our kids being able to practice here as well, so um, our football kids have to go down to DNM because we have we have we have to finish our football season. We just wrapped it up. We have to go down to DNM and turn on the lights down there. They're gracious enough to let us use it. But I think we're really jumping through a lot of hoops for things that we can afford to do here as a community. So that's just my two cents. But I would have said that before. But here we are. So I appreciate everybody voting to go to the next step. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's why we created a privilege of the floor yeah, second go. part, yeah. so it's good. I also just wanted to speak in, as a community member in support of investing in our athletic fields. Uh, in particular, having watched soccer for the last many years, uh, it's very sad to see our JV boys and girls have to go second on the field and then play partial games or no game uh, to have visiting teams come and then the JV teams not even be able to play because it gets dark too soon and um, you think about developing a soccer program uh, that includes your JV team getting a lot of play time, a lot of time on the field, a lot of time in games so that when they move up to varsity those players are ready. Um, and then in addition uh, we've seen some luck uh, especially in the boys soccer team in recent years uh, you know, they went to the quarterfinals this year and then uh, got eliminated on a turf field, mm -hmm. right, by a team that I'm sure practices every night and has plenty of time on their field and as JV kids didn't miss home games uh, due to darkness. So I think lights are a big deal. Uh, sport of a football as well. Football often gets a lot of the attention, um, mm -hmm. but I, I do want to make sure we, we're thinking about a long-term developmental progress that, that's enabled by having lights on those fields. Uh, I mean, it's real dark right now, uh, you couldn't imagine. And then just secondarily, if a turf field also means that some of our clubs in town, uh, Penny Baker soccer is extremely active. Lots of kids participate in that from young ages all the way up. I know there's a lot of hesitancy on letting Peppy Baker play on our grass fields because it puts a lot more wear and tear on them. But if a turf field suddenly meant Peppy Baker could play in Plymouth and on our fields, uh, that would even further help to develop those programs, develop those kids. Uh, I think it would be great. So uh, my kids will be well gone from the high school before they get any benefit from that. But as a community member, um, I'm definitely in support of us finding a way to do that. I know $3 million is a lot of money. So I spread that out over a lot of years. Get an $18 million budget. You know, it, it, $3 million sounds like a lot of money to someone who is uh, middle class living in our community, but we spread that out. Lots of different communities, many years to pay for it, fundraising. Uh, it becomes much more achievable. So my support. Thanks, Seth. Um, anyone else from the from the um, privilege of the floor want to speak on behalf of privilege of the floor? No. Okay, great. Thanks everyone for coming. Appreciate sharing that with us. Board member concerns. Yes, Barbara. Just sitting here looking, listening to the conversations, my mind is going towards what I heard sometime this week on the news about. Uh, the university system declining enrollments. So I'm thinking about our enrollments here because years ago we did do a forward thinking assessment anticipation of what our enrollments would look like and they were declining. Um, I don't know exactly offhand where those um, years ended, but could we have an update? Can we look at that again and see what the last trends were and where we feel they are now. So we have an enrollment over the past years that I give you at every budget cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have some possible future opportunities <coughs> for tuition students as well. And then we have some tuition agreements. So they're a little, it's 
skewed, but I, I can bring the what our history has been. Yeah. But overall, we have remained pretty steady given the sharp decline in most districts. So are people we, are knocking on our door all the time, I'll tell you that much. Are we looking at anything in the very near future about a decline? The, the, it's an aging state, so there's across the state, it's a decline. Great. Okay. Anybody else have anything? I, I know I've I passed my time, but has, uh, are you folks aware of what's going on in Bridgewater and Robin Ebert? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm a taxpayer in Bridgewater, too, so I, I, I just, are you, are we accepting those kiddos if that passes next September? How is that all going to happen? So I can, I can, can I respond? Yes. <laughs> um, so that she brought up, so that's good. Right, right. So, so we have been in, in some preliminary uh, talks, but there's, we have not spoken with anybody who has the authority to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, and they're putting the cart before the horse a little bit as far as that piece, but I think the board is open to discussions about, about that piece. We have room. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And we are interested in making money so, <laughs> to help pay for things we're talking about tonight. So we're very motivated. So if the, the board will take more of an active role if we, once, once March hits and, and they're still interested. Yeah. That's something that can be considered. I think we're on in March. Yeah. Okay. I think that is everything. Um, a motion to go into non-public. If someone would like to state why we're doing that, I cannot. I For would personnel that. and negotiations. Barb, okay. And I'll do roll call. Bruce, are you going to handle signing off on all these students? Do you need to? Yes, help? I should care. Okay. All right. Paul. I, I Paul, can I do roll call? I'll go back to Sam. Greg. Paul, yeah. Phil, Barbara, you made the motion, and Peter Pettengill. Who seconded that? No one. No one seconded that. Let's back. I, 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 I.